Dennis, thank you again for joining me here on Myth Vision. Really appreciate your time. I got a question from a Patreon member, Alex Kayarga. And forgive me if I butchered your name, Alex. Thank you for the support. Anyone watching, consider joining. Does Dr. McDonald think that Jesus was an apocalyptic prophet? And if the Q document supports this claim. At last, a question about Q. Alex, thank you so much. That's the, uh, the other part of my work that I love so much. Um, and I'm going to not say whether I think Jesus was uh, a, an apocalypticist, because I think that's a dangerous projection. But I think we can say that the Q document is, we can say that the Gospel of Mark is, has apocalyptic elements. We can say that Paul has apocalyptic elements. So I think the intellectual cradle of early Christianity must have something to do with apocalypticism. And in the Q document, that apocalypticism is often um, articulated in terms of the kingdom of God. Hey, Basileia tu theu. And, but you also have that in Paul, the, the kingdom of God and so on. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Well, obviously that's eschatological in some way. And, and, uh, and um, yeah, a physical, metaphysical too. But um, I want to talk about how apocalypticism functions in the Q document, as you had articulated, and also to say that I think it probably reflects the historical Jesus, even though I'm not willing to uh, commit myself to now knowing any particular saying that Jesus uttered in that way. To understand apocalypticism in the Q document, I think it's important to understand that Jesus is making harsh demands on his 12 disciples and by extension on the readers. And they can expect in their message of the kingdom of God and its challenge to typical uh, Jewish theology and obedience to Torah, that they are going to suffer. And so what is the reward of this suffering? The, in the Q document, and this appeal uh, comes from Jewish apocalypticism, where the uh, people who are persecuted, if they're persecuted for righteousness, will have eternal rewards. And those who are um, venal or wicked will have uh, punishments is a way of encouraging people to do what the author thinks is the right thing. In this case, the author's Jesus is saying that. So at the same, in the same passage, which I think is very important in the Q document, Jesus says, do not fear those who take you into synagogues and test you for your fidelity to the Son of Man. Don't fear those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. There will be a heavenly tribunal for those who have died. And um, the Son of Man will serve as an arbiter um, before a um, jury of angels. And those who have confessed faithfully in, um, in, for the Son of Man and the Holy Spirit um, will be vindicated by the angels. But those and those who... Um, curse the Son of Man or don't or deny the Son of Man, but not the Holy Spirit, they're going to be okay too. But those who deny the work of the Holy Spirit in the kingdom of God um, um, proclamation, uh, they're going to be punished. And that kind of understanding of judgment in the future certainly has its roots in apocalypticism. But curiously enough, apocalypticism isn't unique to Jews. You have forms of apocalypticism also in the Greco-Roman world, uh, and um, where 
Uh, it's not so much as it's going to happen in an apocalypse, but it, there will be a, a judgment uh, after death and um, in a, a judgment of, of one's virtues or not. And this sometimes includes reincarnation. So it's a huge topic. What I would say is that the cradle of the Christian movement seems to be its alternative vision of a Judaism that is going to cause uh, hostility and those who remain faithful to the vision of the new community will be rewarded um, with um, eternal life or the kingdom of God or whatever. And those who are not would be in danger of damnation. And that's the kind of dualism that is uh, a characteristic of apocalypticism. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to sign up for Dr. Dennis R. McDonald's Greek Mimesis in the New Testament course, reading the Gospels with one eye on Greek poetry. Dennis spends 18 lectures diving into several parallels, building up the methodology to show you his methods and how he sees that the New Testament authors cleverly rewrite and really make Jesus such a better figure than what we see in the older Greek myths and their poetry. You can sign up today, own it for life. There are several hours, well over eight hours of content in this course with 18 lectures. Dennis gives you so much to read and look up and consider in investigating. Did the New Testament authors actually imitate the Greek epics to write their narratives about Jesus? There's several reading recommendations, additional resources under every single one of the lectures. You can download one through 18 on MP3 in case you want to just download it and have it in your your whatever the device might be in order to work and listen at the same time you don't have to just see it but if you decide to watch the content it is all in 4k extremely high quality content as you can see and you I did it in from you know, greek latin uh, the audio is nice and French loud work. takes you through his book really? and it takes is a deep dive be sure to sign up today. I hope you will. This helps Dennis McDonald and it helps educate the world on what's going on in scholarship.